Hello, you are welcome in the course. Uh, the title is Advanced Remote Sensing. Advanced Remote Sensing in Policy Making. So this course is divided into five chapters. There are five ch chapters, and uh, there are many ways we can learn the advanced remote sensing in policy making but in this course uh, i will opt the way which is smart and which can enhance the knowledge and which can give you the up-to-date information the most modern information related to remote sensing so uh, maybe the remote sensing world is new for you so do not worry i have designed this course uh, so it will help you to understand remote sensing even if you do not know about the basics of remote sensing here this is uh, some introduction about me i'm dr zubair islam and all the details are given uh, you you may contact me if you have any doubt related to any topic in this course so as i have told you that there are five chapters out of these five chapters in the first chapter we will talk the introduction to remote sensing and policy making what is the definition and elements of remote sensing and how remote sensing uh, and uh, what is the uh, role of remote sensing in policy making? So this will be the first chapter, which is of course an uh, introduction. In the second chapter, we will talk the electromagnetic energy and satellite image characteristics. Why we are talking the electromagnetic energy? We are talking because remote sensing we will discuss in detail when we will come to the chapter one like what is remote sensing what is uh, the definition and elements then you will come to know that it is essential to know that what is electromagnetic energy what are the characteristics of electromagnetic energy and what uh, are the characteristics of satellite images because when we say remote sensing means remote sensing means suppose this is the earth here and this is the sun sun okay sun is much larger than earth but i'm just giving uh, this is uh, for an example only so this is the sun energy this is the sun energy which makes everything visible on the surface of the earth so uh, how we visualize is our eyes but that is the direct visualization okay you can go and you can see the things but how we can visualize we can collect the data we can analyze the data uh without uh, you know being in contact of the place so that is what remote sensing what we did is we developed the satellites and satellites have detectors the sensors so satellite detects the the reflected energy whatever energy is there it reflects and this reflected energy is being detected by the satellites so this is satellite this is sun and this is here this is earth so here two things are very important which we must have an idea before we use the satellite images the first idea is we should know the characteristics of the sun energy which is coming here and second we must know the the data which is being produced or uh, by the satellites so if these two concepts are clear then it will help us 
I mean this is a soul or the root of the remote sensing we can understand we can have an idea and we can use the images for our policy making so this is the chapter two the idea is we have to know the electromagnetic radiation and spectrum okay then okay this part we can group into one category okay this is energy interaction this is we are talking the energy and this here we are talking the satellite images satellite images so this is the chapter 2 in the chapter 3 now we will uh, discuss in this chapter two very important part one is land use land cover and it will be under you know the environmental when we say the environmental monitoring and conservation policies using remote sensing technique then environmental monitoring so as you know environment covers each and everything which is around us so we cannot cover each and every aspect of the environment in this lecture so i have taken very two important uh, variables or uh, the, the the components of the environment or we can call the two very important aspects of the environment that is land use land cover and the second is climate another may be natural hazards maybe the water maybe the soil maybe the vegetation etc etc so if you my objective is if you are introduced with these two aspects of the environment then another uh, aspects you can explore by yourself so now we are coming to the environmental monitoring here you know the you see this word google earth engine google earth engine here i'm using this platform this platform is the i, I mean is is a is a most i should say most modern or most uh, fast advanced way of working with remote sensing you will get a lot of data i mean thousands and thousands that uh, type of data you will get through google earth engine so if here we are talking the land use land cover then we will finally we will use the google earth engine and i will create some application and i will give you the links of that application so when you will open uh, those application then you can visualize the land use and land cover and you can visualize the climate and the climatic variables and uh, you can go for the data collection analysis and presentation also maybe if you feel that okay this is a very good tool or platform then you can enhance your knowledge in this field that is the google earth engine and i will advise you strongly please uh, because uh, this is the platform i mean it's, it's from beginning to a very advanced level okay so if you begin with this google earth engine you will get uh, much more information it will be very powerful when i say powerful then what does it mean powerful why because it is a very powerful system to understand or to evaluate or to formulate the policies because we need information information is much more important without information without data we cannot go for any conclusion we cannot go for analysis first then the result in presentation and conclusion then reporting something like that so information is very important and why i am saying this very powerful because you know we have our eyes and eyes have the limit okay we can visualize and we we we, we can move here and there and this is the limit we can move some few kilometer but the, the the satellite data the satellite is giving the information maybe one image maybe of whole country so within seconds even less than a minute maybe within 30 seconds you can see that okay today is 24th uh, or 21st 
August and what is uh, the rainfall uh, distribution I mean uh, this day okay then uh, this is the chapter 3 and we will move to chapter 4 we will in chapter 3 we were talking about the environment natural environment and here we will talk something related to socio-economic development for that very purpose we will talk the human population and settlements so of course it is difficult to detect or to understand that uh, how much population is living here but uh, the settlements can be detected by the satellite sensors and these settlements you can understand okay these are the settlements which are increasing which direction increasing how much increasing in 10 years 20 or 30 years or per year how much is the expansion of the urban areas or the settlements uh, whether these settlements are connected to the roads or infrastructure the rivers or the water bodies or how much green or how much yeah so what settlements and remote sensing is related okay so indirectly you can uh, i mean you can uh, estimate the population also with the help of settlements okay here also this is the google earth engine because this is a very robust platform why it is robust because you know the google has acquired um, all the important satellites programs images which these programs are acquiring or collecting the data since 1972 like landsat and another many 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 programs so they have a huge data storage they have a huge data storage and you can enter into that storage with the help of google earth engine then uh, we'll talk the human development also uh, in my previous lectures many of the participants they ask me is there any way with the help of remote sensing we can uh, study the human development so yes there is a way and what is the way as we know that during night time uh, there is a light that is uh, the night light so satellites detect that not night light where night light is more means the development is more so we can use it as a proxy to measure the human development i mean the night night light so here also i'm talking the google earth engine and finally we will learn how we can integrate the remote sensing into the policy making the role of remote sensing in evidence based decision Evidence-based decision means you, your decision should be evidence-based. And if you are sitting in Abuja or another place, then what is the evidence? What is the report? What is the evidence? So such type of things can be uh, easily, uh, you know, uh, studied, and we can make some decision with the help of remote sensing or satellite images okay there is a ground based data okay combining ground based data and remote sensing okay there is ground based data means if a person is going to the field and collecting the data and reporting so his reporting can be validated or uh, can be validated with the help of satellite data okay this is the uh, i mean for an example before the satellite systems there was uh, data related to the forest cover but when satellite started the countries they updated their forest cover based on the remote sensing data and uh, designing effective policy strategy by incorporating the remote sensing insights so remote sensing is considered as a important platform to inform you to collect the data okay to collect the data to analyze the data and thereafter you can make some uh, 
policies or you can evaluate the policies or you can validate the policies with the help of remote sensing data and uh, most of the aspects it will help you i mean the remote sensing will help you in uh, the policy making process so uh, now let's begin with the definition here this is the chapter one the definition uh, what is you know remote sensing here and policy making when we come to the definition of remote sensing under fundamentals of remote sensing the definition you know remote sensing is a science and art why science and art science is because we are learning electromagnetic spectrum we are learning the sensors we are learning the some people they are learning more about the satellites technology and uh, why i'm calling it art why because it's, it's, it's there is some art also to making the maps okay how uh, precise or how beautiful you can present an area in the form of a map so this is art and science both and what for what for what for acquiring the information for acquiring the information information of what information about the earth surface and also atmosphere there are many uh, important components in the atmosphere like there are clouds there are dust particles there are moisture and there are many gases which can be detected by the satellites so we the very important aspect is the climatic uh, that is climatic aspect that is the precipitation which comes from the clouds so satellites can help us to uh, understand or acquire the information of the atmosphere as well as the earth's surface also which is even more important from distance from distance why i'm saying distance because as i explained you before this is what this is earth here and now let me make this is sun here and this is the satellite here so the energy coming electromagnetic energy coming then reflecting satellite is detecting this energy okay so the satellite is here and we are here so from distance from distance this is the reason from distance okay how maybe using sensor on aircraft or the satellites okay maybe on aircraft maybe on uh, it may be a drone it may be a helicopter it may be a balloon also so in when we say remote sensing we are talking uh, general idea is we are using satellites and it involves the measurement and interpretation of the electromagnetic radiation electromagnetic radiation which is reflected or emitted by the object and area on the earth surface so the measurement and interpretation is a very important word why because this measurement means quantity okay once you will measure the things in quantity okay there will be a unit of measurement so you can give your answers to the problems more scientifically more scientifically so it's a measurement of what energy and energy is coming from electromagnetic radiation okay because if you cut it this i mean during night you cannot detect anything with the help of passive passive sensors passive sensors passive sensors means the sensors which are using sunlight to detect or to sense the surface of the earth okay there are active sensors also which are not linked to the sunlight they give their own energy in, in 
produce own energy and they send it here and they again they detect or sense that is the active sensing so here i'm talking the passive sensing and uh, which is of course very important so radiate what uh, this passive remote sensing is using this electromagnetic radiation the energy of the sun okay then remote sensing provides valuable data for wide range of application including earth monitoring resource management disaster assessment and scientific research i took more time to explain this definition of remote sensing because you know the definition gives you a broad idea that why you are learning remote sensing and what will be the significance and what will be the results you will be getting with the help of the remote sensing so if you are uh, uh, there are i mean uh, two two or three ideas you are acquiring the information okay about their surface from distance or then that information that information that information you will use for the okay that information you will use for environment analysis monitoring resource management etc okay so this is the definition of remote sensing and here what are the elements which involved in the remote sensing here in this picture it's very simple and you will i'm sure that uh, this picture will help you to understand the remote sensing better remote sensing better okay elements of remote sensing what are the elements which are making the remote sensing okay uh there are seven elements first of all keep this figure in the mind and the figure is how many elements there are seven elements okay the elements are starting from energy source energy source that is what sun or we can call it the yeah the sun or the energy source we can call it energy source okay so this is what a this is the first priority if you cut it everything is collapsed so the first element is remote sensing is energy source that is sun and it is providing what electromagnetic energy that is the energy which is coming here down the second is the radiation so b part is the radiation which is coming here okay is coming and coming down also here then the, the, the third part is that is c interaction with the target interaction with the target so here what we are learning from i mean in between a and c this is b and what we are learning we are learning that how this sunlight or sun energy or electromagnetic radiation uh, what are the characteristics first the characteristics of electromagnetic radiation and how it is interacting with the atmosphere so its interaction with the atmosphere is also very important and here in this course i will not go very much in detail about the interaction because there are many aspects which uh, we have to cover but if you see the sky is blue the clouds are maybe white maybe gray and sometimes sky is red also i mean close to red this is what this is all sun because of sun energy okay we'll learn in detail when i will come to this part energy source in detail and radiation part okay then 
the interaction with the target this is what this is c under how sunlight or electromagnetic energy is interacting with the surface of the earth here target means any target at the surface of the earth the target may be it will it may interact with the water it may interact with 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 sand with some soil interact with vegetation maybe snow okay maybe another component whatever there at the surface of the earth the energy is interacting okay then i will explain you uh, how it interacts take place with the target interaction with the target then when there is a interaction with the surface so this interaction you know interaction there is some uh, here it is not mentioned there is what some energy is absorbed if take the example of water if interacting with water some energy will be absorbed down okay and if you take another like leaf leaf some energy will be absorbed some energy will be transmitted down but some energy will be reflected back will be reflected so this reflected energy only because absorbed energy gone transmitted energy gone inside the reflected energy is important this reflected energy is important here here so he has made this b here also why i told you that active remote sensing some satellites give the 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 some energy reflect uh, i mean they ref, they reflect the energy and thereafter the that energy will be reflected from the earth surface and will be detected by the satellite so here the arrow from this arrow this is for passive remote sensing active remote sensing sorry but here in general we are talking the passive remote sensing okay passive so consider this one here this arrow so from c to d means what from c to d means the energy which is from the surface of the earth to the satellites sensor okay here this is the recording of energy by the sensor so how sensor is recording energy okay that is uh, we are moving towards our destination i mean the objective our objective is satellite images and satellite images if we if we have to understand then we should know that how the satellite is detecting the energy okay and that okay that is what recording of energy by the sensor then fifth is transmission reception and processing that information in the form of video or in the form of image digital image it will be transmitted to the ground okay and that image will be known as raw image then here this is the office where some scientists are sitting and they are making the corrections required corrections on uh, this image and then this image when it will be corrected then it will be given to you to us and we will go for some analysis okay we will go for some interpretation and analysis here here analysis and we analyze okay this water is this lake is shrinking okay this is i mean this lake is for uh, i mean one year you can but here this part is shrinking in 2022 but in 1999 the lake, the lake was as much 
So such type of uh, analysis will be done by you. Maybe in the form of, I mean, the analysis may be in the field of climate, agriculture, soil, water, settlement, and the the the, the sea line, shoreline changing changes, and what is uh, the, I mean, the temperature is increasing or decreasing. What is the climate change? There are so many aspects you can do with the help of remote sensing. And finally, the seventh point is the here okay that is the application the application is you will give your analysis your results to the concern body the management body the top bodies they may be the administrative bodies it may be the the, the leaders it may be uh, i mean they may be in any field department and they can use your information and they make the policy accordingly and uh, then uh, the things the programs and plans and projects may be developed uh, to solve the problem or to minimize the problem so here uh, we I was talking the elements of remote sensing okay so how many elements are there there are seven elements remember there are seven elements and just you have to have an idea that okay these are the seven elements you start naturally you start from Sun then energy interaction with atmosphere then interaction with the surface then here reception i mean the sensing then the transmission here transmission after transmission it will be you know the interpretation and analysis here in this part f then finally the application so these are the elements of remote sensing then we will talk how remote sensing playing important role in the policy making well this is uh, something which uh, this topic is something which is very easy to understand how it is easy to understand satellite is satellite is detecting here this is the suppose this is the earth here this is earth here and this is the satellite and satellite is detecting any part of the earth and continuously each and every part of the earth okay satellite is detecting so whatever satellite is detecting is a matter of uh the environment it's a matter of urban planning maybe agriculture and food security how agriculture and food security but first let me discuss the environmental monitoring okay changes in the ecosystems ecosystem may be in the form of a pond it may be in the form of a large lake it may be ecosystem may be a forest area ecosystem may be a grassland area maybe the desert area there are different types of ecosystems and what are the changes going on so such as deforestation the wetland loss the the the, the habitat degradation so all such type of things under environmental monitoring you can work with the remote sensing data with remote sensing data so policy makers use this information what to formulate and implement conservation strategies how deforestation should decrease how wetland loss should decrease how the protected areas i mean the area should be protected why this area is sensitive because species is very important no i mean uh, if we you will not protect this area this species will be finished 
so such type of things or measures can be taken so this remote sensing is linked to environmental monitoring and conservation and this aspect is important in policy making then if i discuss the urban planning and land use management urban planning and land use management as i told you the satellite is here detectors are here basically these are your indirect eyes you have a big eye on at the surface of the earth so you see each and everything okay this is one road this is another road and here this is the city which is vis visible which is visible in year 2000 like this year 2000 like this but now if you will sit, see the city has been grown as much in 2022 okay then what you will you can calculate the area okay what was the area of the city in 2000 and what is the area of the city in 2022 what is the difference which side is moving more and what is the reason why this side the city is not moving this side maybe because of mountain something so and why this is not moving this side if this is moving in linear way it may have uh, it may need some more uh, transportation then why the city is not uh, growing i mean equally in all direction what what is the reason what are the factors so such type of things i mean in urban planning and land use management you can do with the help of the satellite data satellite images Similarly, if you will see the agriculture and food security, you can see agriculture is at the surface of the earth. If anything is being cultivated like rice, then rice plants have some signature, the sign. Okay. So, okay. So, if uh, the agriculture, the you can see, okay, this is the uh, paddy cultivation or rice cultivation in this area. Okay, this is the area where this rice is being grown. This is place A. And you can detect the area which has very suitable conditions here also, B. But people are not growing rice. They are engaged in another activity. Then you can ask these people, okay, you grow, you can cultivate rice and it will make you, it will give you profit. If you will grow here. Because with the help of satellite data, you can study the soil type, you can study the soil moisture, you can study the rainfall, the amount of rainfall at, at any, and the season of rainfall, I mean, from which time to which time. So, if all these suitable conditions are there to grow the rice, then you can suggest the new areas, okay, you grow. So, this is an example only of rice. There are many different types of crops and maybe the suitable area to grow the coffee, suitable area to grow or to cultivate the sugar cane or maybe yam or some another uh, agriculture activities you can suggest with the help of remote sensing or you can uh, of course it will help you the policy makers can use the remote sensing data to find the suitable area to monitor even the crop health also crop health crop health if it is healthy it will be very green okay if it is getting some disease then it will change its color and the satellite can inform you okay this part of the uh, area i mean this this area this part of the area is suffering because of this disease here crop is getting down 
so in the field of agriculture and food security you can use the remote sensing to collect the data to analyze the data and to interpret the data and you for reporting the data reporting the information and based on that reporting you know it will uh, help the policy making process and now uh, come to the natural resource management very broad topic natural resources there are different types of resources biotic abiotic okay maybe uh, mineral resources power resources exhaustible non exhaustible resources so all such type of resources on the earth at the surface of the earth you can use the remote sensing uh, data to monitor them to monitor that what is the area of this resource what are resources okay it will take you less less than a minute within second you can calculate okay at as much area the water is spread water is spread it you can detect the rivers water flow also that okay uh, this is you can study the uh, geomorpho geomorphometric study of the rivers with the help of the remote sensing data so all this information uh, policy makers can use and they make the informed decisions for resource allocation for conservation and sustainable management so this was about the natural resource management then come to the disaster management response okay uh, you might have seen that there is some flood or wildlife uh, wild fires so generally leaders what they do they go to the they use the helicopters to monitor the flood affected areas but uh, even you can you can use your laptop you can acquire the information you can acquire the remote sensing data and uh, all of uh, i mean within minutes you can say that okay at, at this particular day at as much area what was spread it flood area and as many houses were submerged under the flood uh, flooded water so uh, here the, the the significant thing is the measurement you can you are giving the measurements okay this is the area okay as many houses are submerged you can calculate based on the houses density or you can give some information as many people are affected okay and where the problem is worse where the problem is moderate and where problem is less problem okay so uh, it will help the policy responses uh, for accurate damage assessment evacuation planning and post disaster recovery strategies now this topic is uh, being studied uh, widely in the news or i mean uh, you, you, you this climate change okay the world community or national uh, the politician or directors they are talking climate change climate change so climate change also you can study with the help of remote sensing data because if there is a change in the sea level change in the ice cover change in the vegetation and change in the vegetation you can say uh, why this is change is it because of anthropogenetic re reason or it is natural uh, so this may be because of the climate change so based on that information policy makers can use that data or they can formulate climatic adaptation or and mitigation strategies and they can assess the effectiveness of the environmental policies also now we come to the seventh point that is health and disease monitoring 
okay there are you know remote sensing add in tracking the disease vectors environmental pollutants disease outbreak pattern okay uh, this is uh, i mean if you find the, the the places like this is one place this is one place here this is one place this is and you have the data of different places then you can make the hot spots okay this is the hot spot area where the problem is there okay then if you find the hot spot if you find a pattern then uh, you can go for some strategies strategies and you can do some indirect uh, analysis also like if there is malaria and malaria is uh, related to a mosquito and mosquito has some favorable environmental conditions maybe in the form of water temperature so which are the favorable condition for these mosquito and okay this is this part of the country has more favorable conditions so there are more mosquitoes and more malaria cases may be there and uh, so based on that you can you may be ready you can prepare and you can ready you can prepare yourself for the healthcare resources okay as many things as many net as many you know the anti malaria uh, tablets are required for this place and you can allocate the resources accordingly now the infrastructure and transportation planning because uh, transportation is also an important activity of human being there are different types of transportation it may be a road it may be a railway line it may be a water uh, based transportation so all this transportation linking on the places is very important and with the help of remote sensing data you can uh, make the networks and you can plan the, uh, the, the, the the bypass roads and you can make you can plan some express roads very fast two way uh, I mean four ways six, four lanes six lanes roads as per the need and uh, you can even evaluate or you can uh, study the road conditions with the help of high resolution data high resolution data you can uh, see that where the road condition is not good it is possible with the help of remote sensing data okay then the infrastructure and transportation pl planning this is not only the transportation all kind of infrastructure you can uh, assess the need like uh, the like with the help of satellite images you can assess the need of the communication lines or need of the towers communication towers the need of the water supply to this area from one place to another place you can uh, and another the the, the 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 need of the airport the need of the seaport the connection from airport to seaport or sorry the the, the road stations or railway station to the seaports so such type of planning uh, in such type of planning the remote sensing will help you very well then come to the uh, border and maritime surveillance the remote sensing data because you cannot see each and every part of the border and for border security is important to monitor the the security i mean uh, the the border uh, maybe there may be some illegal activities detection it is possible with the help of remote sensing there may be you know your enemy is making some uh, settlements 
or they have some vehicle movement around the uh, the the border area so such type of movement the movement of the infrastructure development or the movement of the vehicles can be seen easily with the help of satellite images and then uh, such type of information will help the policy makers to use that data to enhance the national security prevent sm smuggling and protect the ma marine resources okay well, uh, this is tr transboundary and international agreements. So, uh, there may be some cross-border environmental issues. Like if you will say the Niger River is not only in Nigeria, but it is there in another countries also. So, how much water is being used by Nigeria and how much used by another country so such type of agreement international agreement transboundary agreement uh, are possible uh, with the help of remote sensing data then uh, evidence based decision making because remote sensing provides the objective and reliable data the satellite will not speak false satellite will give you the exact information satellite of course you know when there is a problem of uh, you know suppose there is here this is earth this is satellite so whatever satellite will receive the signal it will give you the same but if there is a cloud so here at the image you will see the cloud so it will give you the whatever it, uh, the sensor will detect it will give you the same information so such type of drawbacks are there the clouds cover sometimes uh, they give you the i mean not accurate information uh, otherwise you know whatever seen or detected by the satellite is that is the accurate information and that is the that, that is what reliable data that is the reliable data so policy makers can make well informed decisions uh, supported by the scientific information okay leading to the more effective and targeted policies so overall remote sensing uh, empowers the policy makers okay with timely and accurate information okay and there will be some evidence based policies and it contributes to more sustainable and informed decision making process across diverse policy domains so this was all about the chapter one before i move to chapter two uh, the chapter one will uh, means let me conclude that in chapter one you learn three things the first is the definition of remote sensing the second you learn what are the elements of remote sensing and the third thing that how remote sensing and policy uh, making is uh, there is a link so you learn these three things here and you recall the elements there were seven elements remember and each element is very important to move towards the application so the first element you remember was the sun okay sun and sun is giving us the energy electromagnetic energy we can call it electromagnetic radiation that is emr emr 
so we that is the radiation but this has a characteristic that is electromagnetic spectrum so we will learn that this radiation what are the characteristics of this radiation so we will discuss this thing in chapter 2 what are the characteristics of electromagnetic radiation in spectrum in the first hand you may be thinking that why you are learning ems or electromagnetic radiation but this is an idea only so if this idea will be clear to you you can understand the different bands which are given by the satellites in the i mean uh, the information which is coming to the uh, i mean to us by uh, from the satellite is in the form of bands so that is why this uh, electromagnetic radiation or spectrum is important so uh, this is all about the chapter 1